Alright guys, uh, decided to do a little video here on um, how to properly strip and install ends on your coax cable for your television. Now what I have here is just a simple little tool that I picked up from Home Depot. It's made by Klein and it's just a stripper. And if you can see inside there, you see them two metal parts. That's two blades. One's to cut the outer jacket insulation and one's to cut the inner jacket. And this here particular one is meant for RG6 cable, which is common, which is generally what you'll find in your home for your coax cable. Now I have my piece of cable here and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now you can see there's a little stop right there on that. So you're going to install your cable just like that up to the stop. Okay? Just like that. And then you can see you got a little finger loop here. So what you're going to do is take a spin this around a few times. Only cutting through the outer insulation. Once you spun it around a few times, cut through the outer insulation, you're going to give it a little squeeze. Cut through the inner insulation to get the other blade cutting. And it doesn't matter, you don't have to go in a circular pattern, you can wobble it back and forth. Now, before you finish, just kind of gently squeeze the thing. And there you have it. A nice clean connection. You have your inner core which is your copper and then you have your outer part which is your aluminum or whatever it is. Steel, I'm not sure exactly what it is. Now there's a bunch of different types of connectors out there that you can put on these, you know, uh, male connectors. The ones I preferably use, I don't have one to demonstrate with, but they are a compression type connector and you're going to use a tool like this. And this is a rather inexpensive tool. This here may have cost $15 at the most. And what it does, as you can see, on the inside there, the connector and the copper will go through a little hole right there. You'll put the connector in there, and you can see, hopefully you can see that, on the back side here is a little stop. And that's what will actually connect to the black pla or the blue plastic if you buy ideal connectors and once you install it with the cable you'll put it in here like this and your connector will be in there and you'll simply squeeze this down pull it off and there you go you'll have a the blue plastic that was sticking out will go in and it'll make a good compression fitting now there's also another type of compression fitting which I don't have as well. I do have the tool but I don't know where it is because I don't use it anymore. But it's basically along the same lines but it's got a, a separate ferrule and then the connector, the actual hexagon connector that you use to screw onto the back of whatever device you're hooking it to. And what, in that case what you do is you slide your ferrule on first and then you put your connector on you slide your ferrule up over the, the brass part that will be sticking right here. And then you take that tool and crimp it. Not as good as a connector if you ask me. And then also they do make a, just a basic screw-on connector. So once you've stripped this out, and this tool here, people, is a must-have. Because you don't risk cutting this outer metal here, this outer aluminum. If you cut this outer aluminum, you're going to get a bad signal. You know, if you just use a regular old pair of wire strippers like this, I mean, you can do it this way. You know, you have to be very careful, you know, when you cut it. I mean, you can use this to cut, you know, to your copper, like so. And then you have to be really, really careful with a pocket knife. But this here machine, this little tool here, makes it absolutely perfect because of the fact that it pre-cuts it to the right length 
so you don't have to sit there and say, well, I need a half inch of this and three-eighths of an inch of, of this sticking out. It cuts it perfect. And for four or five dollars, you can't go wrong. I mean, that ain't that expensive. Now, the other type of connector, which I was talking about, is just a screw-on connector. It's one piece, and it's got like a, a, a coarse um, thing on the back, and you'll just sit there and spin it and turn it until it stops. And those are a pretty good connector too. I've used those before and they work fairly well. They're better than the uh, the old style compression connectors, but not quite as good as you know the compression connectors that you use with this tool. So I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, just uh, give me a private message or give me a, a comment on this video. Take care, guys.